Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> so the floor is to Janis, who will be talking about uh, Peace Founder. Yeah. Thank you, Eru. Uh, thank you for introducing. Uh, and I'm Jan Sertmanis, and today we'll be presenting the Peace Founder project. It's, it's an e-voting system, in the con and it, I present it in a context of uh, full-stack development in Julia. To understand what the stack solves and what it invo involves, uh, let's understand the, the problem, the e-voting problem. Uh, securing e-voting systems essentially means to uh, defend against three main threats. Surveillance, uh, it's uh, surveillance knowing how voters cast their votes can influence how they uh, can influence uh, z their choices on affairs, their choices due to coercion and bribery. Uh, there is a deception, uh, secret uh, election authorities can secretly manipulate election results, or there is an ad it could be adversary which uh, erodes the trust of about the election results as, uh, as uh, attack vector deception. Also, there is possibility that the voting, voting devices themselves lie to the voters how they could cast the vote. And lastly, there is a sabotage less talked about. It's uh, disrupting the voting process itself, uh, preventing the result announcements. Uh, these, these are threats are understand in the literature, and there are certain properties which e-voting systems need to have. To combat surve surveillance, uh, we need the two properties. The first is anonymity of the votes, so the, vo the vo published votes cannot be linked to the individual voters. And we also need a race of freeness, which means that voters cannot prove to the third party how they cast their vote. And this eliminates uh, uh, coercion and bribery. Uh, the second one is to, uh, to combat deception. It's necessary to have understand very well that we need end-to-end -end verifiability, end -er verifiability. This means that even if all authorities involved in the process election authorities are corrupt, they wouldn't be able to affect the final election result without being detected in the final, res uh, final uh, fi in the final evidence. There is also important necessary necessi necessity eligibility verifiability, so that, that the votes which come inside, so the so the votes which are sent in, are checked that they are uh, signed by. Uh, signed by eligible voters, so the, it prevents uh, stuffing from el by election authorities. To, s uh, pre uh, uh, to prevent sabotage, we need to use uh, rob robust systems that ensure s uh, some accountability measures in place, so that the end uh, whatever happens, which is bi a bit ambiguous, the election result can be uh, published. We also need availability, uh, some tools to defend availability. So if we have a DDoS attack, what we do, or perhaps we have a corrupt, uh, corrupt election server, which perhaps, uh, for instance, could, which could uh, discriminate certain kinds of voters, which it thinks uh, could cast votes in a certain way. So all these are quite, uh, if you combine all these things, it's quite a challenge. And what's what's a typical way to solve? And and these all these things are kind of solved with end-to-end uh, -end verifiable, known as, typical known as end-to-end -end verifiable e-voting systems. And typically they are based on re-encryption mixnet or homomorphic tallying, which and which are fine uh, decrypted, where the votes are decrypted in a threshold decryption ceremony. And how these systems works is that there is an election authority which sets up a uh, public key for under which the uh, under which the votes needs to be encrypted, and uh, and group elements representing uh, candidate choices. So during the vote, uh, voters chose their their candidate uh, and they encrypt it under the uh, under the published public key. Uh, after the uh, after the vote, all, all the votes are collected, and they undergo a re-encryption mix mixnet. And finally, the encry uh, encrypted votes are decrypted in the decryption ceremony, and they can be counted, forming the final tally. 
uh, all, these, all these steps, the mix cascade and decryption ceremony are supported with a, zero, uh, with a robust zero knowledge proofs. So that if, if, they, if any party of the would be corrupt or would try to influence the election results, they would be detected and the uh, valid election, resu election result wouldn't be valid. Uh, so that's how it's done. Uh, there is, however, uh, st quite an issue with the uh, deployability of these systems, and it comes to the deployment of threshold decryption ceremony. The threshold decryption ceremony is necessary so to ensure the vote privacy, so that a single party wouldn't be able to reconstruct, uh, wouldn't be able to know, so the owner of the secret key can so the single party wouldn't be able to get a secret key with which it could decrypt the votes knowing how, how each individual voter had voted. So to resolve this situation, the, uh, the key must be sharded between multiple parties. And we need also some, and there is an issue that these parties need to be independent and we need some redundancy. Redundancy is qua uh, quantified with a threshold, the number of parties which need to participate in the protocol. And the threshold, if it sets large, there is a possibility that corrupt minority could prevent the election result from being decrypted. Uh, whereas low threshold could, could risk that the corrup a corrupt minority would uh, reconstruct the key and know how in each individual voters had voted. So it's, it's this del delicate balance uh, is what makes it very costly to deploy. So that uh, I would state the statement that uh, secure development deployment of existing end-to-end -end verifiable voting systems is unfeasible for small and medium-sized communities. And this is supported by evidence where with Ontario 2022 elections. And what's happened there, it's, uh, as I understand, there is some kind of le state legislative authority, and it issued that, uh, as I understand, due to the COVID uh, pandemic, they issued that the 2022 elections need to be online. And they happen to have some independent, uh, by law, they have independent election authorities in each municipality. So each municipality was, was in a position to choose what online voting system they would choose. choose. And uh, it's an ideal ground for researchers, they, and they found, they inspected, uh, made a survey, quite a survey, and they con uh, concluded that the aft after the, uh, during the election, after the election, that the most, of the most of the municipalities chose the black box systems. Because of the, and this is my uh, interpretation, this because of the deployment issues which in, uh, in are involved in. So, uh, and this is where Peace Founder e voting system comes into the picture. The Peace Founder system is the core primitive is idea is based on digital signatures. So digital signatures ca are issued, uh, takes three parameters. So they take message, uh, a group element, and we, uh, a group generator, and a secret key. And the public key with which the signature is issued is a generator exponentiated into the secret key. And it is possible also to use the same secret key to, to issue a signature on a different generator. And this public key then would be, there and then would be different public key, and it turns out that these signatures are completely uh, are not publicly linked. You cannot publicly link them, unless uh, you know the exponentiation factor which links the two generators. Or alternatively, there is possibility f to construct zero knowledge proofs for the logarithmic statement of equality. Either, either a person knows the uh, uh, S or secret key uh, with which the signatures were issued. So, and this can be extended in what is known, so this, this property of unlinkability can be extended in what is known in uh, exponents, uh, in when we have multiple parties, in a construction known as exponentiation mix. 
So what it happens, as you sh see in the picture, on the left side we can can't have a list of public keys and a generator G, and on the right side we have can have exponentiated with the same same the, the party chose some secret factor secret factor and exponentiates our public keys and the generator with the same factor and provides a robust zero knowledge proof that ensures the integrity of this process. So it's like a not so if the key individual key secret keys are linked by uh, threads in this knot, then we, we see that the input threads correspond to output threads, but we cannot individually link each other because of the knot. And that's how you can be interpret it. And this process can be repeated mul any number of times with different individual parties, in different independent parties. And the output public keys, then, when, the, when one uses the output generator to sign messages or votes, in, par in, in particular, they would be linked, uh, they we would know that they are eligible to the member set of input, input uh, pseudonyms, let's say, uh, uh, identities, uh, but they wouldn't be individually linked to the, co to the, vo uh, to the voters. So the anonymity in this process, the anonymity and verifiability is ensured at the same time. So this is one part of the picture, and uh, I suggest to uh, read the paper uh, by Hainius Fischer on this. Uh, the other part is to make the system centralized. Uh, I had an idea uh, so to introduce uh, uh, history trees in the uh, in the for maintaining an, uh, history trees and history trees are extensions of Merkle trees uh, with unbalanced number of entries and they are used and currently used very quite popular with a transparency logs to, delif de to detect malicious certificate authorities or alternatively, now also Go programming language this also uh, use them to distribute their packages securely. And the history trees provides uh, two, two kinds of proofs. One is inclusion proofs. So th if you have a signed root commit of the tree, you can get a uh, corresponding inclusion proof for any record in the tree, which is uh, of logarithmic size. Uh, and uh, consistency proofs. If you have a commit from the pr uh, some ledger uh, for the root, then you can ask later. Some person can ask later on what proves that for from the current commit proves that this uh, it, it is your previous commit is included. So pr previous root is included, and that's what previous uh, consistency proof does. And if random queries by sync clients uh, are done, this ens can ensure the bulletin board immutability without doing replication. So next one is the implementation uh, of the system. So the bulletin board is split between two, two kind of type ledger types. One is a bright chain ledger. Which uh, so the why 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 it's uh, why it's introduced so it's uh, so it's the Swiss founder system is designed around asynchronicity asynchronicity of, of available braiding resources and uh, it's hence it's based on uh, hence there is a long lived instances called deems and in, in these instances people register the exponentiate which is called braiding and can add proposals uh, and, and when one, one adds proposals there is a bridge ballot box ledger in instantiated uh, wh where the authors can submit their votes so that's an interesting uh, fast view and then the when the voters the voters when uh, when they want to vote they receive the proposal on their device uh, on the voter client and this uh, Voting client includes a uh, generator with which I on which they need to sign the votes. And when they sign the votes, it is signed with a pseudonym and receives a back a receipt 
which is, a, is a, in, back, in fact, in a simple sense, it's an inclusion proof of what of what hash of the timestamp cast index and and later on some of the some of the voters want to check that their vote is still included and to do so they ask for ask for the previous commit index with which they receive the inclusion proof and when they ask it they receive back the consistency proof and if it is uh, if the consistency proof is consistent with a locally stored uh, inclusion proof or uh, the previously stored commit from the server, then uh, they can are assured that their vote is included. But if there is a, if if there is discrepancy, uh, if it's they are not consistent, uh, this pro uh, this inconsistent this inconsistency can be published publicly without any implications of the on anonymity of the voter. So that's in this way, the system is fu allows the system to be deployed fully centralized. There is uh, the system is uh, the, uh, the system is system has a fully centralized responsibility, but the accountability is put in the hands of the voters' devices of the voters who check their can can check the consistency proofs. So that's uh, so that's a kind of introduction. There is and let's come go to the demo. There is a link which where you can go and kind of follow with uh, Raspberry Pi instance what I'm going to do. Uh, but let's see. So I have opened the Peace Founder client. It's uh, uh, written in a QML and. I can I have uh, some registration form. This registration form designed for uh, as example how would you want how would one could one do the integration in the existing login infrastructure. So we need an invite. Let's say I input my one puts a register. I get I get uh, invite code. Copy it. Paste it. And that's hopefully works so it takes a time and okay so I have uh, registered to the team and now I see that there are proposals on which on which I can't can't vote because I haven't been registered yet so let's see uh, and we see after registration we receive uh, index me membership index and this membership index corresponds to the uh, index of the where the record is included in the branch ledger. So it's index 11, and this is our membership record. Uh, now to start to, to vote, we need to do the braiding. It's now, now we do the self braiding, but the idea is that one could choose any uh, connect to arbit any arbitrary other deems which would cost the system, and uh, so. Uh, in this way, in, uh, increase the anonymity uh, set of the vote for the voters. But now let's do the cell braiding, and the braid is done. We can check it what it does. So this is just a metadata out of, of what what we what we saw. But we see there is some output pseudonyms <coughs> with which voters can issue signatures, and we can make a new proposal. Let's vote on why. We can put yes and no. Of course, we can do the configuration. And there is the important part that there is anchor index at, at which braid, at which generator uh, the proposal is anchored. And yeah, so this is it. The proposal is there. And we can update. We get it there. And we can vote. We can put yes. And we cast ca get got casted vote. And now the voter receives a uh, kind of received. They received a pseudonym, a pseudonym alias with which it was cast, at what time it was cast, and the cast record index. And we have also verification. During the vote, there is a small window of uh, a small time window. After they cast the vote, they can verify that their devices had cast their votes as intended. Before the uh, before all votes are published publicly, 
So this is you put get take this uh, uh, this key and it's it's put in a form and the form returns from the server on in on the secondary de device how how it was cast. So that's how it that's the way it works and so the so afterwards so the voters had cast their votes. We can see that they are on the ballot box and tally. We can actually actually see on the previous. Okay, this is also this one. So they can be. There is possibility for revolting the, uh, when the when the votes are overridden. They can be mal in some instance malform, but uh, it's important that the all votes which are uh, signed by valid pseudonym, they are included. So, after that, the final step is to publish the evidence. And to publish the evidence, the, uh, the, vote, uh, the administrator generates a SSH public key and it can be put into the GitHub repository. Okay, and the GitHub repository it's uh, as an expa example shown in piece on their demo, and there we have important that we have an auditing happening, auditing in continuous integration of the records respective to the commits. And to make it make a sense, this root commit is shown on the voters device, and they can compare it with the ballot box. When they update, they can get the latest commit. And they can compare with officially uh, when the uh, with the officially announced tally. So when a tally is announced, this root commit sh uh, root three three hash should be included, and then it immediately proves that every everything uh, every chain ch uh, by chaining everything together that uh, every uh, there is uh, so everything can be verified. So let's look back into the Julia. So, with regards to the full stack. So, the, f the stack of this system consists of around 15,000 lines of Julia code and 3,000 lines of QML with some JavaScript and G CSS. Uh, it's a, it's a built as a model of monolith. And so, some of the essential dependencies on its built is. Uh, crypto signatures, which implements FIPS 1.4 standards, so can be used uh, elsewhere. It uh, implements shuffle proofs, which is uh, implements some functionality functionality from Java Verificatum library library, and uh, history trees implemented there. And the the main module is built uh, in the following structure. There is the top bottom, which consists of mod model, parser, and store, and the audit tools with which we uh, get, get got the green badge, badge is based on the model, which contains, in, uh, which uh, defines the invariants which need to be satisfied. Whereas controllers contain different, uh, where the controllers define how what happens when the single instances are added. And then there is mapper and service on, on which uh, it culminates in the admin panel. So what's the great of Julia for this project? That's it's the memory safety in garbage collector allows to focus on the problem itself, to focus on the typing and get the ty types right. Uh, multiple dispatch, for example, is binding. So for example, document and signature, is there is is binding method for that. And in total, for all different types, there is is by the 337 with binding methods. Okay, so yeah, and there is interactive workflow with revised int infiltrator and yeah, and short feedback loops and uh, uh, revise uh, enable HTTP request and revise enabled QML. Uh, how I use it and some issues I have. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think we'll have to save questions uh, till the end. Yeah. And hand the, but um, thank you very much.